Welcome to Electro Online. So far we've seen three very good methods to find the fours on the slanted portion of a dam. But those three methods only work when you indeed have a straight line slanted portion. What if the dam has a curved portion? Then those methods no longer work. Or they would be much more difficult to implement. In this particular case we're going to see a fourth method that is actually usable for any kind of submerged dam portion on which we want to try to find the total force. In this case, just to make it simple again, we have a straight slanted portion, angle of 60 degrees relative to the horizontal, the depth of the water is 8 meters, the width of the dam is 30 meters, the exact same proportions as in the previous examples. But what we're doing now in this case is we're looking at two different things. First of all, we're looking at the weight of the water of the wedged region here, or I should say the triangle wedge that consists of the water that goes from the very foot of the dam to the top of the dam that's enclosed in here of course for a total distance of 30 meters in the width we want to find the weight of that the weight of course is equal to m times g which is equal to rho vg we also want to figure out the total force due to the pressure of the water on the vertical section of the water right here so how much force is being pushed up against this portion of the water the wedge of the water those two forces combined will then be reacted upon by the slanted portion of the dam pushing back in such a way that the sum of those three forces should add up to zero since everything is in equilibrium. So let's call this the resultant force of the dam pushing back against the weight of the water and the pressure of the water. So we're going to draw a triangular shape here. Here we have the pressure, the force caused by the pressure of the water. Here we have the force caused by the weight of the water in that triangular wedge and then we have the resultant force pushing back right here and that would be the force that we're looking for that is the force the total force acting on the dam being acted upon or reacted upon by the dam pushing back so all we have to do is solve this triangular shape we need to know the magnitude of the force caused by the pressure we need to know the weight of the water and then we go ahead and can solve for r using Pythagorean theorem the force of the pressure, that's relatively simple. We can see that this is a straight line. We can then say that the force due to the pressure is equal to the average pressure halfway down, so P average, times the area of this rectangular portion. In this case, the average pressure is one half rho GH. That's the average depth or the, halfway, the depth halfway down multiply times the area which is the height times the width and we've seen this equation before that is simply the force that you would have on a straight a straight vertical wall segment of a dam if it was straight up instead of slanted so let's go ahead and work the numbers out if you plug in the numbers we get one half times a thousand kilograms per cubic meter g is 9.8 meters per second squared h squared that's eight meters squared and then W, the width, is 30 meters, and that will give us the force caused by the pressure of the water. 500 times 9.8 times 64 times 30 equals 9.408. 9.408 times 10 to the 6 newtons. So that would be the magnitude of this force right here. 9.408 times 10 to the sixth newtons. Now we need to find the weight of the water. The weight of the water is equal to mg or rho vg, which means we need to find the volume. To find the volume, we need to know what this x is equal to. And using this triangular shape, this is the uh, relative to this angle, this is the adjacent angle side, and this is the opposite side. We can say that the tangent of 30 degrees must be equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, or the, or the opposite side is equal to h tangent of 30 degrees. So the volume is going to be equal to 1 half x h w. Where does that come from? The volume of this wedge-shaped region that's completely filled in with water is equal to the area of this triangle that would be 1 half the base times the height and then multiply times the width to get the full triangular shape. Here we get the volume is equal to 1 half times uh, h squared times the width times the tangent of 30 degrees so volume is equal to uh, do we need to put it in here no let's just keep that part of the equation and plug it into here the weight which is equal to 
the density times volume times G is equal to the density times the volume, which is one half H squared times W times the tangent of 30 degrees. In this case, because this angle here is 30 degrees, and we multiply that times where are we here? Okay, volume times G. I can't forget G at the end. Plug in the numbers for all that. The weight of that wedge of water is equal to 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, 0 0.5, H squared, that would be 8 squared. The width is 30 meters, the tangent of 30 degrees, and finally G being 9.8 meters per second squared. So the weight is equal to 500 times 64 times 30 times 9.8 times the tangent of 30 equals and we get the total weight equal to 5.432 times 10 to the sixth newtons. So a little bit over 5 million newtons, a little bit over 9 million newtons. So now we also have the value for W 5.432 times 10 to the 6 newtons. Now to find R, the magnitude of the force on the wall, that can be found by saying that R is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the two sides, of the two components here, F sub P squared plus W squared. So R is equal to the square root of 9.408 times 10 to the 6th squared plus 5.432 times 10 to the sixth squared. And let's see what we get when we work that out. So we square that plus 9.408 e to the sixth squared equals, take the square root, and we get a total value for r is equal to 10.8. 86 times 10 to the 6 newtons, which again matches the number that we got in the previous examples on the previous videos. What's the difference here? Well, the difference here is that this triangular shape doesn't need to be triangular shape. It can be any sort of shape. All we have to do is find the weight of that water. So if you have a dam that is curved like this, which a lot of dams are, all we have to do is find the weight of that water in that section of the, the water behind the dam. We need to then find the total force, which is easy to do because all we have to do is find the distributed load equation, which means that the force due to the pressure of the water is simply equal to the average pressure at the halfway point times the area of that rectangular portion. Then you draw a diagram like that where you have the two legs of the triangle being the force caused by the pressure, the weight caused by the water, and then the hypotenuse of that is equal to the magnitude of the force on the dam, regardless of what the shape of the dam is. Also what we're going to need later on is where do those forces act? If this is of course a triangular portion, the point at which all the weight appears to be acting would be the centroid of this triangular portion, which would be one third the distance from here to here and one third the distance from there to there. That would be right there about that point. And likewise, you have to find the centroid of the distributed load which would be one third the distance from the bottom to the top, so it would be right about there. So you can see the points through which those forces are acting, the force caused by the pressure and the force caused by the weight of the water, and from that we can then calculate the moment on the dam based upon those two acting forces. That's the way we do it in a general sense, so the fourth method is simply a good method that can be used for any sort of geometry of the dam, and it works for triangular shapes as well, just like we saw here. And that's how it's done.